Heroes! <laughs> Who doesn't love them? They're pop stars, billionaires, sensations, icons. But most importantly, everything I am now is because of you. Don't you see? I'm not ready. Please don't leave me. Dear human. In the world of My Hero Academia, heroes are the image of something greater, something beyond ordinary. They are the representation of success and improvement. In a garden of flowers, they are a blue rose. Beautiful, unique, and perfect. And in a world where something so special and admired exists, who in their right mind wouldn't risk everything just for a chance to be one? To be more. This is how the world of my hero views heroes. Young children grow up dreaming that one day they might stand amongst these superior beings, these gods, and be recognized as such. Adults respect them and are envious of the life they could have had, but they remain grateful because they know that not just anyone can be as godly as a hero. But the truth is, a rose is just another flower. Heroes are treated as deities, yet behind it all they are nothing more than another person, another human. With how much pro heroes are worshipped and praised, this is a fact we and the rest of the people in My Hero can often forget. How many of us can say we haven't dreamt of being a hero flying through the streets defeating villains, or how one day we will get pushed to our limits only to go beyond and surpass them? We and the people of the My Hero world dream of being heroes, to be something more. But the sad truth is, being a hero isn't about being more than human. It's about being more human than everyone else. And no character represents this fact more than Shota Aizawa. Now let me explain. You see, I'm not saying that the other characters in this series aren't human. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I believe that one of the reasons this series is so special lies in how real each and every character feels. Their conflicts, dilemmas, and choices resonate with us as an audience because deep down we can relate to and understand each character's feelings and emotions. It's why this ragtag ensemble of superhuman beings is so beloved. But within this relatability, there is a falsehood. And that falsehood is the idea that everything will be okay. We have it ingrained in our heads that the heroes are the champions of peace and prosperity. That they are an unrelenting force who through sheer determination and willpower will always find themselves the victor, no matter the odds. I mean, the slogan of the series is literally to go beyond. And how many times have we seen the heroes do just that? And every time a character does, it feels special. Because it is. Surpassing your limits is amazing. But surpassing your limits to achieve the impossible is extraordinary. The reason we look up to these heroes as something beyond the ordinary is because by just bearing witness to even a single act of Plus Ultra is enough to know that it is truly something special. But behind the one something special we witness is countless failed attempts. To truly appreciate something precious is to understand the scarcity of its existence. And this is where Shota Aizawa comes in. Aizawa's introduction leads us to believe that he is bitter, unforgiving, and relentless. His initial decision to expel whichever student comes last in his fitness test seems overly harsh, especially considering it's the student's first day in the school. The students came to the school to learn to be heroes. Yet before they even had their first lesson, they are put in a situation where losing means more than just losing a game. It means losing their dreams and their future. As a first impression, this makes Aizawa out to be over the top and a bit on the loony side of things. But the truth is, this is the most rational test. When you think about it, this is the kid's first experience of a plus ultra moment. They are put in a situation where the odds of success are stacked against them, and if they don't excel and push beyond their normal limitations, they risk the chance of losing everything. It's the closest possible way of putting these wannabe heroes into a life or death situation without it actually being life or death. And if one of them couldn't go beyond during this test, then they truly shouldn't be a hero. Not because they don't deserve it, but because they couldn't handle it. If a hero can't surpass their own limits when put in a dire situation, then they risk more than just losing a game. They risk losing their life and the lives of the people around them. Everyone in the My Hero world sees Aizawa's tests as taking it too far but he's the only one taking it far enough, because he understands the harsh truth all too well. A hero's life isn't glamorous, it's painful, heartbreaking, and sometimes 
even giving it 100% might not be enough. Think? I can be a hero too. Aizawa has worked in every walk of life as a hero, with an agency, undercover, alongside policemen, independently, and as a teacher. He's experienced almost everything being a hero has to offer. Yet, the most important experience he's ever received in his career came in his second year of UA, in the form of Oboro Shirakumo. Oboro was Aizawa's friend and acted as the Mirio to Aizawa's Tamaki. He was carefree, jovial, and no matter the situation, he always found a way to look on the bright side. He was everything the world thought a hero should be. Strong, inspiring, and a beacon of hope. He was the ideal hero. And that's what makes his death so impactful. Shirakumo was everything a hero should be. He was perfect. But in the end, being perfect wasn't enough. It took the loss of his friend Fraizawa to realize this truth, and the images we have of these perfect beings is false. And the fact of the matter is, they're just as mortal as you and me. Obero's untimely death at the hands of a villain is the harsh reminder that even the most beloved, carefree and inspiring people aren't beyond human. And it is this moment which began Aizawa's transformation into the person we know today. His harsh and strict exterior as a teacher isn't one of resentment or cruelty, but one of care and remembrance. He pushes his students and puts them into situations others would deem too extreme or harsh because he knows more than anyone that the real world is unforgiving. And to be honest, this is what makes him the perfect teacher for the next generation of heroes. While most teach their students about the greatness of the top pro heroes and how one day they could be just like their idols, Aizawa teaches his kids that you shouldn't strive to be like your idol, but to be better than them. His goal as a teacher is not to teach his students to be perfect heroes, but to understand that there is no such thing as a perfect hero. The only thing they can truly do is perfect themselves. When he scolds them for slacking behind or failing, it's because he knows they can be better because they have to be if they want to survive. He doesn't care about why his students want to become heroes or what drives them. All he cares about is that when they leave UA, that they will be capable heroes who can look after themselves. That the bright light of hope and enthusiasm each and every one of his students brings won't be quenched by an all too familiar untimely demise. That they will be strong enough not to suffer the same fate his dear friends suffered all those years ago. While All Might represents the ideal hero, Aizawa is the representation of what it really means to be a hero. Not their ideals, but their reality. He's not a pop star, an entertainer, an icon, or even a celebrity. He's a man who has suffered loss, dread, and pain. A man who watched as his own hero died right before his eyes. The hero that wasn't a symbol or a pro, but the hero who was his friend. The truth is, the life of a hero isn't a fairy tale, but a tragedy.